Good morning, Kevin. Morning, Bede. How are you today? Good, thanks. How are you going? Good. What are we talking about today? What um, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about is what do we what is the what is the meaning of suffering? And the reason why this is important is that in Western psychology, for example, the idea is that there are certain mental processes or certain things within the individual, the isolated individual, that are causing our problems. Mm. That, so that for Western psychology, the meaning of human suffering is this. It's psychological. Yeah. And because it's psychological and because the the problem exists within the psychology of the individual, they then come up with various forms of therapeutics to try and do something about that psychological suffering, which exists in the individual. And the cause of it is the mental processes that are happening within the individual. Yeah. Now in Vedanta, um, the meaning of human suffering is nothing like that. And unless we understand human suffering in the right light, in other words, in the light of the teaching, because the whole teaching is a method to be able to see clearly what actually is, mm -hmm. unless we can understand what human suffering actually is, we can never resolve it in any real or basic way. Okay, that's a big topic. It is a big topic, very interesting topic. I found it extremely interesting. Now, uh, unlike a Western psychology which starts with the individual, what we're going to do is we're going to start with reality. Mm -hmm. And and we even, even have to, to start with what we mean by reality. Yeah, good. So that's where we're going to start, okay? Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Vedantic vision of reality as unfolded by Swami Dayananda, the starting point of everything is the reality. And the thing is that Reality uh, seen in this way is that we have reality, um, which is the source of everything that we see. Mm. Everything that we see. The source. Yeah. Now, in Western philosophy or in even religious thought, sometimes it's, it's as if one day in the past, God created the world like an automatic clock. And then he left it and now it's going on all by itself and he's not there. <laughs> yeah. That's a common Western kind of notion. Now, what we're looking at here is that the, what we have is, is that, and, and I'm going to use a, um, uh, a, a very specific formal language with this. Reality is that from which everything comes. Mm -hmm. It is by which everything is sustained. Mm -hmm. And it's to which everything returns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the thing is that here we are, we have this, this ever-present reality. So reality, first of all, is abiding. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's outside space and time because space and time are objects that we can see, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So every object that we can see, thoughts, feelings, planets, people, trees, cars, everything that we can see or conceive. Mm -hmm. so everything that we can conceive with our mind, right? Everything that we can uh, sense with our senses, perceive with our senses, 
everything yeah. that we can describe. Okay? Yeah. They, their existence comes from this reality, mm -hmm. is sustained by this reality, and goes back into this reality. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that life is really a coming and going of these constant appearances? Yes. Look at it from a high point of view. Mm -hmm. Things are coming and going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perceptions are coming and going. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, so as we've discussed in previous talks, this abiding reality, okay, manifests its presence, first of all, in the form of this universe. And what do you mean by this universe? You mean everything inside? The everything. Mm. This functioning universe. Yeah. yeah. Which includes my thoughts and feelings, mm. other people, everything is everything comes from this reality. So are you saying that, for example, the wooden bookcase behind you comes from, comes from the same reality from which your, your body comes from? What I'm saying is that the, that is, I am, is, that, is that the bookshelf is the presence of reality in the form of a bookshelf. Bookshelf. Hmm. The presence of me as an individual is the presence of reality in the form of me as an individual. Mm -hmm. Now, a good point that you bring up. Remember the, the clay pot example? Yeah. You have a clay pot. Now, this clay pot, mm -hmm. Swami Dhananda used to say, it's really potty clay. <laughs> mm -hmm. We tend to make the thing the substance. Mm. But in actual fact, there is, there is only the presence of clay in the form of a pot. Mm. Mm. There's actually not two entities. Yeah. So the pot doesn't have its own being. No, it's dependent on, on the clay. That's what you're saying, isn't it? it, it because it is clay, yes. It, 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 is, it comes from clay. Mm. It's being sustained by clay. And if you break it up, it, it goes back as clay. Yeah. Now, so when they talk about the presence of reality, is that this... Reality is the, what they call the material cause of this entire universe. Mm. Okay, in other words, it's not that there's this presence of reality and then there's a separate universe sitting there. Yeah. But the, the whole idea of God is outside the universe looking down at it. Mm. Mm. Okay. What it is is that the presence of reality is in the form of this manifest universe, the universe that we can see, the universe mm. that we can touch. Mm. Mm. Okay? So, the, the, so when we're looking at the source of all existence, that reality, right, from which everything comes, It doesn't imply distance when we say comes. Mm. It's just simply that whatever you're looking at is the presence of reality in the form of whatever you're looking at, mm. including space and time, because you can see space and time, can't you? You can recognize space and time, can't you? It can be an object of your awareness. It's an object of my awareness of time, yeah. yeah. Um. It's not a sensory awareness, no. Oh. Okay. Now, so what we have is this abiding reality which is ever-present, omnipresent. You ever heard that expression? Yeah. Present everywhere, all-pervasive is what the Hindus talk about. 
never not present. <laughs> yes, that's right. And abidingly present. Yeah. Okay. So this reality, uh, in reference to this universe, in reference to this universe, not in reference to itself, mm. but in reference to this universe, is the material cause of the universe. Mm. It is the being of everything that is here. One single reality. Not two, yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Reality. Now, also, the, the thing that when we look at this manifestation, we see that it's a functioning universe which is functioning, actively present, functioning now, perfectly in keeping with the intelligent arrangement it is. Okay? Yeah. Can you say I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Yeah. Let's imagine that we've got a car, a car engine. Yeah. It's an arrangement of parts, isn't it? It's an intelligent arrangement. Yeah. Now, that arrangement is going to determine completely how it works, isn't it? Yeah. So every, act, act, every function, every activity of that engine can't help but work in complete conformity with the intelligent arrangement that it is. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So with, in reference to this universe, this abiding reality is the intelligent cause of this universe. You know, it is the intelligence that is operating. Mm. It's manifesting as a functioning that is perfectly in keeping with the intelligent arrangement this universe is. So does, is, that means it, it, it's or, it's orderly. It's not just random. What's what? The no, it's an intelligent arrangement. If you've got a whole lot of matches just thrown on the table, that's there's no order there, is there? No. But if I start to line them up in a line, that's what Swami Dhananda means by order, an intelligent arrangement. Mm. And when we look at this huge, ginormous, vast universe, it's an intelligent arrangement. Mm. It's functioning perfectly in keeping with this intelligent arrangement. And this is and the cause of this intelligent arrangement. That's why we say that, that reality is the intelligent cause. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the source of everything, in reference to this universe, this source of everything is the intelligent cause. Mm. But it's not away from the universe. It's manifesting right now in the form of this operating universe. Right here, right now, as we are, this uh, dynamic functioning that's happening, mm -hmm. that's, that's completely conforming to the intelligent arrangement. So the source is manifesting as this intelligent functioning. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, there's another very important point here. You know how we say that the clay pervades every little aspect of the pot, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. But a clay, from a certain point of view, we look at it as an inert, don't we? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I'm going to say now is extremely important. And Swami Dayananda made this incredibly clear. Everything we're looking, the source of everything is alive. In fact, it is life. Mm. And when it manifests as this universe, this universe is the alive presence of God in the form of this universe. It's not dead matter. Mm. It's not like, imagine if you think of it like 
in uh, Western philosophy or Western thinking, what they did in the 17th century is they reduced everything to mechanics, like a, like a clock. Yeah. They took away completely any notion that of, of sacredness <laughs> mm-hmm. and they completely destroyed the, 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 the whole, uh, whole idea of, 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 of nature or whatever being expression of God's handiwork, if you like, or an expression of the sacred, mm-hmm. the life was killed and made in, made nothing, made into nothing, just mechanics. Mm-hmm. So it's very important to see that the very presence of the given, which is at any one moment, the given is what is what we're experiencing. Okay. What we're, what we're saying or experiencing? It was same thing, yeah. What we're experiencing, okay? So we're experiencing trees, people, thoughts, feelings, doesn't matter. Mm. The very presence of the given is the presence of reality, is the presence of God. Mm. Mm. Okay? So, and this is extremely important for us to understand what this universe is. Mm. You see, some people think the universe is just this great big machine. Western science tends to think that. It's just, mm. it's just dead inert particles banging into each other mm. Mm. And, and, and somehow arranged in intelligent forms. Yeah. But what we're looking at here from, from in the light of the teaching, mm. and this is what we're going to look because, you see, we need to look at the world and our experience in the light of the teaching so we can clearly see what is in front of us. Mm. This is what Swami Dayananda means by means of knowledge. Mm. You see, this is what means that we use Vedanta, the Vedantic teaching, as a means of knowledge. So in this case, we're looking at what is the world. The world is the presence of reality, in the form of this universe, Mm. which is a functioning universe, which is perfectly in keeping with the intelligent arrangement of this. It's functioning according to the intelligent arrangement that it is. Mm. And And that the presence of reality is intimately involved with all of this. Yeah. Okay? We clear so far? Yeah. Now, I'm going to be going on to how this is related to human suffering in a minute, right? Mm-hmm. So here we are. We're, we're, here we are as an individual. We're living in this universe, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Right? Now, uh, but there's a remarkable thing that Swami Dayananda says. The human individual... Say that again, sorry. This is a remarkable thing that Swami Dayananda unfolds. Mm-hmm. That ourselves as an individual are not in contact with the world as it is. We're not actually in contact with the presence of God in the form of this universe. Mm. We are completely and utterly enclosed in what we call our self. Mm. We don't live in the world as it is we live in a private world enclosed in a private world of our own meanings and our own notions Mm -hmm. in other words we are cut off not only from uh, we're cut off from the actual universe as it is the manifest universe Mm -hmm. let alone being cut off from the source because if you can look at it, you have reality in itself, which can never be, uh, can't possibly ever be understood as an object, because every object is it. Mm. So it can never be understood as an object, mm. but it's not conceivable with your mind, mm. it's not seeable with your senses, and you can't describe it. Okay, so how do you how do how do you recognize it then? Um, 
the only way to do that, was, which we'll go on to later, is, is we can, according to the teaching, we can come to an appreciation that, that, that the reality, that reality, which everything is, we are. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can appreciate ourselves as that reality. And then the, there's no, but it's not, it doesn't involve a dualism, me looking at it. Mm. <laughs> okay? We yeah. can only, we can only be being. Mm. That's the highest uh, uh, point of Vedanta. Okay? Yeah. But I, we're not going to deal with that at the moment. Okay? Now, so here we are, we have reality appearing in the form of this universe. Mm -hmm. And here we are, we're even cut off from this universe, caught up in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So basically, it's true that we are, we are, we are, um, there is a, there is a distance between ourselves. What, so what happens is, is that we are cut off from the source, the source that is life. We're mm. cut off from reality, but this cutting off is cognitive. In other mm. words, it's due to ignorance. Mm. It's not that we are far away from reality, but but the experience is that we are. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So the reality is that we're not cut off from reality. <laughs> yes. Because if we were actually cut off from reality, Swami Dayananda says we wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. But our problem is, is that we're, we're enclosed in our own world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And because we're enclosed in our own world, we're cut off. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to go... Uh, now, I'll, I'll start with something. So... From this point of view, now have you noticed that when we've talked, that whenever we come into, you see, so the most important point for us as individuals to understand is that the very presence of the given is the presence of the giver. Is the presence of the... The giver. Yeah. The presence of the given is the presence of the giver. Translated, mm -hmm. the very presence of... The given, whatever is here, is the presence of God. Mm. Now, what's important for the human being is this. When you come into conscious contact with the presence of God in the form of this universe, you disappear as a suffering person. Yeah. That's a big statement. <laughs> well, why it's big is this. You see, Western psychology says that the problem with the individual is psychological problems. Mm -hmm. Swami Dayananda would say that given that you are not in conscious contact with God mm -hmm. or with reality in the form of this universe, and we're only talking at the level of this this life in this universe, you cannot help but suffer. It's a natural and an inevitable consequence of our state of alienation from reality. Mm -hmm. So the basis of human suffering is not psychological processes. Mm. Our misery, and, and the other interesting thing is this, being in this state of being cut off from living in the world as it is, mm -hmm. we cannot help but experience insecurity, fear, mm -hmm. and constantly chopping and changing of our mental states. Mm -hmm. And there's no possibility of ever feeling at home with ourselves. Because only when we we turn and we return to the source of everything. Mm -hmm. Can we actually feel at home in the world? Mm. 
Make sense? Yeah, yeah. But it, even that psychological suffering or misery we have, that's, there's a certain order to that, isn't there? That's what I mean. Mm. Given that we are cognitively cut off, in other words, we are living in a world of our own, we're living, we're living, in, we're living in ignorance. Mm. When we're caught up in what Swami Dayananda calls subjectivity, mm. our own subjective world, our own little world, Mm. We don't know what reality is. We don't know we don't know what reality is. And we don't know we need to know what reality is. Mm. Western psychologists, for example, take the isolated psychological individual. Mm. They, ne they have no idea of what reality is. And they have no idea of the fact that the, the, the problem of the individual is the individual is isolated from that reality through ignorance. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why the Swami Dayananda is insistent on the fact that the first, the starting point of Vedanta is that we come to understand what God is. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he unfolds this remarkable thing that the very presence of what is here is the presence of God. Mm. And when we come into conscious contact with the presence of what is here, the given only without our projections, yeah. we disappear as a suffering psychological entity and we appreciate ourselves as a simple conscious person in relation to the whole. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is it so important? You see, why is it so important to understand that our fundamental problem is that we're, we're, we're cut off and we're, we're no longer, we're not in conscious contact with God. What, what, why is that so important? Because we feel insecure. We're chopping and changing all the time, depending on circumstances. Mm -hmm. We're always chopping and changing. People are yep. doing what we don't like. And we don't, we, we want to feel at home in ourselves, but and we're, Presumably, we're looking in the wrong places to achieve that. Right. So what? And see so what? And and the, and the whole point is is that <clears throat> once we really see that the meaning of our insecurity and unhappiness, not feeling at home with ourselves, hate being ourselves, self dissatisfaction, I can't stand being the way I am. Mm. I'm unhappy with the way I am. Mm. Once we understand that's the we understand that the problem of that is not the feelings, the intense pain, but the problem is, is that we, we, are, we are not connected to God. Mm. We're not in conscious contact with God. Mm. Then we know where our solution lies. Yes. Because the meaning of our suffering stands in reference to what God is. Mm -hmm. So you're saying if I'm suffering, we don't, we, I don't know what God, if I'm suffering, I don't know what God is at that time. It, it, right now, right here as I am, I don't have, I'm not abiding in the appreciation of the presence of God. Mm. Okay, there's two things. I may, uh, uh, like me, I can easily shift into a state where I lose the appreciation of the presence of God. I'm no longer abiding in the appreciation of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I can, oh, I can recognize it and I can shift back mm. into resting in Ishvara's lap. Mm. But before that, there's no place to go because unless you actually know what God is, you can't be conscious of him. Because mm. remember, we said you can only see what you know. Yeah. Now, the practicality of this is this. 
and anyone who's listening to this um, talk. If you pause and just just look at any object, just just pick an object. Can you do that now, Kevin? I'll do it too. Pick an object. Okay, what object have you picked? Any object, Kevin. What, have you picked the object? What's the object you've picked? Oh, your bookcase behind yeah. you. Okay, good. And I'm I'm looking at a chair. Okay. Now, now what I want what us all to do is just simply simply receive the presence of that object in into yourself, into your mind. Just simply, just simply receive. Just for just for fifteen seconds. Just simply. Quietly receive, just appreciate the presence of that object. Okay, go. What did you notice? My mind went quiet. You went quiet. Yes. You become quiet as an individual. Mm. Okay, you got to watch this. My mind went quiet business. Mm. Okay. So what happens is, is that what happens is is that Swami Dayananda says a very interesting thing. He says the way to invite Ishvara into your life is by being aware of Him. Is that right? Yeah. Now the thing is that when he says aware of Him, he's not talking about someone like Uncle Joe, a bigger version of Uncle Joe, a super mm. being or something. Because the presence of reality is the presence of this universe, isn't it? Mm. So when we come into conscious contact with what is here, the presence of what is here, in other words, when I pause and I just simply receive the presence of what is here, because you see, provided I've recognized that the presence of the given is the presence of the giver, mm. Whenever I become aware of the presence of the given, I am filled with the presence of God. Mm. Now, I'm always filled with the presence of God, but I don't. Unless I appreciate it, it's as if God doesn't exist. Yeah. That's why Swami Dayananda said this most amazing thing. He says, the way to invite Ishvara into your life is by being is by being aware of him. Mm. He wasn't talking about having a religious belief about him. He wasn't talking about having a philosophical concept. Mm -hmm. He was talking about that the way to invite the presence of God into your life is by being aware of him. Now the presence of God is the presence of cars, trees, Thoughts, feelings, sensations, colors, sounds. Mm. This is, in Swami Dayananda's vision of God, this is the presence of God. Mm. And when that presence, when, you are, when you're abiding in the... See, there's two things here with, as far as his understanding of God goes. First of all, the recognition of this fact. Mm -hmm. And he says that, and the thing is, is that with the recognition of this fact, you can then, because you now know what God is, you can then see what God is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that here you are, you're sitting quietly with yourself, and you just simply, you, you knowingly, Live the vision by knowingly appreciating the presence of God in whatever form he is taking. So if I'm sitting here, I can just simply go quiet and I can abide in the appreciation of the presence of Ishvara. And at the moment, it's my voice, it's the sounds in the room, and all of this stuff. And what happens is, is that because I'm now in relationship to the whole, 
I'm in relationship. Mm. And when I'm abiding in this relationship to the whole, I cease to be an insecure and self-dissatisfied individual. Mm. Psychologically. Yeah. That's an amazing transformation. It is, and and it's not, it's very ordinary, but <clears throat> the thing is, is that, is that um, it's very, very important to uh, uh, dwell on this or dwell in this relationship to each mm. one and become very familiar with this abiding in this relationship with Ishvara while we're carrying on our living activities. Mm. Because if we're not, uh, if we're not actually uh, in re- living our life in relation to the whole, mm-hmm. we cannot help but be an isolate, psychologically isolated individual. We just, mm. We're just a psychological entity. full of psychological reactions. The actual psychological reactions are us, actually. We're them and they're us. When, when you say being aware of reality, mm-hmm. being aware of God or Ishra... The, the presence of reality in the form of this universe, yes. You're not talking about thinking about that, are you? No, no, no not even a little bit, no. Uh, or believing it or, or anything like that. And you, 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 can, you can think about it in the sense that, you know, we're given, you see, the formal teaching says that everything is Ishvara, mm. but the point is until we see the meaning of that statement, see the meaning of that mm. statement, uh, we, we can't appreciate what is being said. Mm. We can't appreciate it as a reality. Mm. So when you see, if I'm every morning, for example, I sit down every morning yeah. for about half an hour. And all I do is I just simply sit here, I close my eyes, and I just simply knowingly appreciate the presence of God. In other words, I sit down, I close my eyes. We could actually do this, Kevin, just while we're doing it, just for a So first of all, just simply, simply first of all, sit down Mm -hmm. and close your eyes. And all we're going to do is we're not going to try to do anything. You see, uh, open your eyes. I want to to say something else here. Open your eyes again, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yep. What you see, we're not dealing with any. We're not dealing with spiritual idealism. We're not trying to make our mind quiet. We're not trying to get rid of our thoughts about the future or our thoughts about the past. We're not trying even to stay in the present. Okay, Mm -hmm. so when we're doing this, when we're abiding in the appreciation of the presence of Ishvara, we're not using our thinking or we're not trying to do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're suspending our will, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you're looking at a tree... When you're looking at a tree and appreciating the presence of the tree and the colours, you're not using your will. You've opened your eyes and you're actually just simply looking at what's there, aren't you? Yeah, you're not doing the same. Yeah, if you're in front of a tree and you open your eyes and you say to yourself, I'm not going to look at the tree, you can't help but see the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is when we do this, if you just sit here quietly, okay, now close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's listening to this uh, conversation can do this. Now close your eyes. And all we're going to do is we're going to just sit here and we're going to appreciate the presence of reality in whatever form it's taking. So we might, we're appreciating sounds. We're appreciating the presence of sensations in our body. We're 
appreciating the presence of the fridge humming. We're appreciating the presence of reality in the form of our breathing. We might find that we, be, we, we recognize we've been distracted. Well, th that's the presence of reality in the form of a distraction. We, all we're doing is we're just simply, what Swami Dayananda means by just simply being alive to facts. We're awake to the moment by being ourselves. But we're not trying to be ourselves. We just simply, and this is the interesting thing, when we're appreciating the presence of reality, we appreciate ourselves as a simple conscious person. So to appreciate the presence of God is to become conscious as a person. We're appreciating the weight of our feet on the floor. We're appreciating the presence of reality in the form of sounds, distant sounds of birds. We're just letting what comes and goes. We're just simply appreciating what's coming and going in terms of appearances, but we're appreciating the focus is the appreciation of the presence of reality in the form of these things. Now, in the very contact, in the very appreciation of the presence of reality, we find ourselves being different. We're lifted out of our insecurity and self-dissatisfaction. We find that we're at home with ourselves. Because we're at home with Ishvara, we're at home with ourselves. And the feeling of being at home with ourself depends upon our being in relationship with Ishvara. Okay, open your eyes. Now, were you trying to do anything there, Kevin? No. Were you trying to get a result? No. Were you thinking about what God is in the world, or all the you know thinking philosophical or religious thoughts about God? No. But isn't it interesting how, when you come into conscious contact with the presence of God, you feel at home with yourself? Hmm. Peaceful. Yes, you feel peaceful in yourself. Mm. And not only that, is that you feel alive to facts, don't you? Yeah. You're alive to facts. Mm. And as a natural consequence of appreciating the presence of God, you're awake to the moment, aren't mm. you? Mm. By being yourself. A beautiful phrase by Swami Dayananda. Mm. So you are in relationship to that reality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, this is, this, is, this is a relationship, okay? Yeah. This is, it implies dualism. I am in relationship. I, as an individual, are in relationship to Ishvara. I am mm -hmm. being a conscious individual. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one more step that, that I don't deal with because you need to you need to get in front of a a, 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 a traditional teacher who who's skilled in the method of unfoldment. But there's one more step here, and it's this. Swami Dayananda makes a, a big distinction between being a conscious individual, which is extremely important. First, we have to be, we have to become conscious as an individual, otherwise. We remain an isolated psychologically, a psychological individual, an individual who's, who's constant, our experience of ourselves as a, re, a reactive psychological individual. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's, only, there's only two options in, in the, at this, yeah, yeah, at this level. Yeah. 
you're, you're either being subjective, if you're being subject, any form of psychological suffering is being enclosed in subjectivity. In other words, your mind isn't full of the reality, right? Mm. It's not full of objects, objective. <laughs> it's full of yourself. Yeah. I want what I'm hoping for, my struggles, all of that stuff. Okay? And that takes, that, that takes the form of frustration, boredom, anger. Yes. Can't help it. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. you've got the individual who is, is not in relationship to Ishvara. Mm -hmm. And that individual is being suffering, is being yeah. insecure, and is being self-dissatisfied. I hate being the way I am. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then you have this conscious, the individual undergoes a transformation. And, and the word transformation, trans means across, there's a shift in form from being insecure uh, uh, and self-dissatisfied and mm. not being alive to facts, just being caught in our own world, mm. to being in relationship to Ishva, being in relationship to that relationship. Okay? Yeah. Now, the ultimate end of Vedanta is to get as close to, God, to our source as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's a distance. Even if if, if I'm a relate as a as a conscious, Swami Dhanan says the big difference between being a conscious person and being consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's a famous mm -hmm. saying in Vedanta, and I'm going to paraphrase it in English a little bit. That being. Remember, we we're talking about that at the beginning. That being. That. That being, which everything is, mm -hmm. the rocks of this being, the sounds of the, this being, the, my thoughts of this being, that being, which everything is, you are. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about here is a recognition that the reality of ourself and the reality of this being is one and the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the, high, that's the higher vision. That is the that that is the ultimate vision. Hmm. But Dain, Swami Dayananda says that, you, that 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 this vision is the culmination of a life of devotion. Hmm. In other words, unless I devote myself to living in relationship to Ishvara while I live my daily life that vision is not possible for us. Mm. So we have three steps here. We've got two steps here. From subjectivity to objectivity at this level. Relative, relative, it's relative level. Being yeah. caught in our psychology, enclosed mm. in ourself, to living in the world as it is, coming alive to the world as it is. Mm. Being at home in the world as it is. And many people if I've talked to, have, like me, have experienced this thing of this desire to go home, mm. to find some place where you find refuge. Now, what Swami Dayananda says is if you cannot appreciate your oneness with God, in other words, if you can't appreciate that that being which everything is you are, and abide in that appreciation while living. Mm -hmm. He says, what you do is you take refuge in God. You take what? Take refuge in God. Mm -hmm. That's the preliminary step. Mm -hmm. Because this is what transforms us psychologically, coming into relationship to God. Mm. What delivers ultimate freedom is the recognition and appreciation that the reality of God and the reality of me is one and the same. Mm. But you cannot go from subjectivity yeah. straight to this. Mm -hmm. This is impossible. Yeah. The coal face is here. The mm. coal face is learning to live a life where we 
are in relationship to Ishvara and we're living our life from that relationship, in that when relationship. You, when you say living our life, you're meaning performing actions, everyday actions. Yeah, li living is functioning. Mm -hmm. So when we're functioning, right, mm -hmm. when we're functioning, but we're, uh, we're, rest we're relaxed in the lap of Ishvara, mm -hmm. you know that relaxed feeling when we were doing before? There's a dis very distinct relaxed feeling, isn't there? Yeah. We're going to go into that later. But when we're performing actions, when we're performing actions while we're in that attitude, while we're doing what we're doing in that mm -hmm. attitude, right, mm -hmm. we are living in relationship to Ishvara. In the next mm -hmm. talk, we're going to go more into that. But I just wanted to clarify this point, is that, mm -hmm. that Vedanta is nothing like Western psychology. Mm -hmm. Because Western psychology thinks that the meaning of human suffering is just simply psychological processes and what's happened to the to person in the past. Mm. In the vision of Vedanta, if we're cut off from God, cognitively, not, not ontologically, not in reality, we're not cut off from God. Mm. But if we're cut off from God cognitively, we can't help but suffer. It's inevitable. There is no fixing this. No matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter what you find, no matter what book you read, nothing can resolve the psychological suffering. What, the only thing that resolves it is, first of all, recognizing what God is and then abiding in the appreciation of that while living. Okay? Yeah. All right? Okay, Kevin, we'll continue this next time. All right, thank you, Ben.